Antarctica is located at the southernmost part of our planet. Surrounding the South Pole, it's a land of ice and snow with hardly any trees or plants. Did you know that in winter, temperatures can drop as low as minus 80 degrees Celsius or minus 112 degrees Fahrenheit? But in summer, near the coast, it can warm up to around 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Even though it's massive, bigger than Europe and Australia, very few people visit Antarctica. Why? Because it's so remote and covered in ice with no permanent human residence. The first confirmed landing was in 1820. The number of visitors to Antarctica is increasing every year, but now about 122,000 people visit Antarctica every year. While 122,000 visitors every year to Antarctica may seem like a large number, an estimated one and a half million people out of eight billion people on the planet have ever seen Antarctica, making it one of the most untouched places on Earth. Earth. To get Antarctica, you have to cross the Drake Passage. It's a stretch of ocean between South America and Antarctica. And it's famous for having some of the roughest waters in the world. Ships get tossed around because of the warm Pacific and cold Antarctic waters meet here. When it's calm, people call it the Drake Lake, but other times, it's the Drake Shake. There is no guarantee of storm-free time to cross the Drake Passage, but the best time to cross is likely in the Antarctic summer, between November and March. Usually, these Antarctic cruise ships will drain the swimming pool for safety of the passengers. Otherwise, if you happen to be passing through the Drake Passage and encounter a storm, the water could splash all over the boat. The ship we were on did that too, but luckily, we were passing through that area at a time when the wind was really calm. No rocking at all. Our first First destination in this Antarctica trip, Elephant Island. It was named because the rocky landscape looks like an elephant's head. And because of the massive number of elephant seals that live here, these are the largest seals in the world, and males can weigh over to 4,000 kilograms. They might look lazy and slow, but don't be fooled. Male elephant seals are super aggressive when it comes to fighting for territory and mates. During mating season, they battle with huge bodies and powerful wars using their sharp teeth to defend their territory. It's like a real-life kaiju fight. But outside of each mating season, they mostly spend their time lounging on the beach and diving deep into the ocean to hunt for squid and fish. Antarctica is home to millions of penguins, but how do they survive in such freezing temperatures? Great question! Penguins have thick layers of blubber, aka fat, under their skin, and their feathers are densely packed and waterproof trapping warm air close to their bodies. And there are several main types of penguins found in and around Antarctica, such as emperor penguin, bodily penguin, chin trap, gentoo, macaroni, and rock hopper penguin. Did you know the different species of penguins look and behave differently? Emperor penguins are the tallest, while gentoo penguins are the fastest swimmers. They all eat fish, squid, and primarily krill, which is kind of like a small shrimp. Generally, about the size of your thumb. And because of the krill's red color, penguin poop stains the snow pink or red. Next time you see red snow, you know why? <gasps> the Elephant Island is also famous in history due to Ernest Shackleton's expedition in 1915. Their ship, Endurance, got trapped in the ice for almost a year, from January 1915 to November 1915. The ice crushed the ship, and they had to survive on floating ice for months. How did they survive? They hunted seals and penguins for food, melted ice for drinking water, and used their lifeboats to escape to the elephant island. Shackleton and five men sailed more than 13 
500 kilometers to South Georgia in a small help boat me. to seek help. They were finally rescued two years later in 1916 without losing any lives. One of the greatest survival stories in history. 90% of glaciers in the world are Antarctica. There are other nations where they have glaciers, such as Iceland, Greenland, South America, Alaska, and Canada. But the ice here in Antarctica is older than drier, and the largest ones are than glaciers in other places. Why? Because despite the abundance of ice, Antarctica has very little snowfall each year. Humidity is extremely low, resembling an ice desert. So less new snow means less young ice. Therefore, Antarctica's glaciers have older, more compacted, and drier ice. So a glacier is a giant frozen river of ice on land. An iceberg, on the other hand, is a chunk of a glacier that breaks off and floats in the ocean. And have you ever heard someone say the tip of the iceberg? This comes from the fact that most of an iceberg, about 90%, is submerged and cannot be seen. Also, icebergs melt from the bottom up instead of the top down. Which means you never quite know how much more iceberg is concealed underwater. Antarctica has the most icebergs in the world. They come in different shapes and sizes, from flat top tabular ones to crazy jacked ones. First, we have tabular icebergs. These are flat topped and look like floating ice plates. They break off from ice shelves and can be as big as cities. Then we have pinnacle icebergs. These have pointy sharp peaks like ice and castles. But wait, why do some icebergs look bright blue while the others are white? Great question. Icebergs get their color because of how light interacts with the ice. Freshly fallen snow has a lot of air inside, so it reflects all the light and looks white. But when ice is compressed over thousands of years, it pushes out all the air. That's when things get cool, literally. So the older and denser the ice, the bluer it looks. Sometimes you'll even see streaks of different shades, depending on how much air is trapped inside. <laughs> hey everyone, did you know that even though our planet is covered in water, most of it isn't drinkable? That's right, over 97% of Earth's water is salty ocean water. That means we can't drink it or use it or farm. But here's something cool. Glaciers and icebergs are made of fresh water. When they slowly melt, they provide water for rivers, lakes, and even drinking water. Some luxury brands harvest glacial ice for premium bottled water. So melting glaciers aren't all bad. Some melting is natural and necessary. In places like Himalaya, glaciers slowly melt in the summer, feeding rivers that supply water to millions of people. But here's the problem. Glaciers are melting too fast because of global warming. Instead of a slow, steady flow of water, they're shrinking rapidly. That's dangerous because, number one, too much meltwater at once causes floods. Number two, when glaciers disappear, rivers and lakes lose their water source, leading to droughts. Whoa, so we need glaciers to melt at a slow and steady rate, but if they melt too fast, it's a global disaster? That's right. Scientists are studying ways to slow down ice loss by fighting climate change. But one thing's for sure, we all need to take care of our planet. So that's pretty much for our first day of adventure in Antarctica. Stay tuned for the rest of our trip in the next video. See you again next week.